Hello everyone and welcome back to my transgalactic trek in Elite Dangerous and in this episode I'm aiming straight for Thor's eye. That sounds a bit interesting but uh, we have actually five stops altogether and the first one that we're going for is Smojue TY-SE3-5 which is a B-type star. And in order to get there we've got a few stops in between. First is this F-type star, which is, I'll just go by the last few digits, D5-30. And so D5-30 here is all alone, no little planets, so I move right along. So with a few exceptions, I mostly skip the stars that I don't do anything with, for that I don't find any planets around. But uh, for the first few here, I will show them. So this is B23, uh, B25-3, an M-type with uh, some companions that I'm not going to explore, but uh, no planets. There we go. I actually uh, kept a little log of all the stuff that I saw on this trip. And that was to simplify my ability to make this commentary. So here's an F-type, and I know from my notes that it has 13 objects around it when I ping it. Yes, 13. Very good. And so this D6-21, I decide to explore its two planets there. Uh, you see them there. The rest are all asteroids. So I cover these. One metal-rich planet. And I have hopes that something interesting, but really it's just a bunch of silicate vapor. Uh, tiny, thin atmosphere, 0.06 atmospheres. And its other planet. That one seems a little bit more substantial, a high metal content plant, larger, uh, heavy atmosphere, very heavy atmosphere, and uh, carbon dioxide rich there, otherwise silicates. So maybe some sort of silicate life form, but it's tough to say. As I pass by it, uh, we see that it's got a bit of a lava thing going there, little red splotches. But anyway, so the policy for this is I'm going through pretty quickly. Uh, on my way through to Thor's Eye, but I do want to explore, and I'll show you what I explore, and that's the main content of this video this time. Next up is OD-AC14-9, and that's a G-type star, so similar to our sun, and I go ahead and ping it. and 17 objects and uh, as we see there there are three clear planets but in fact as I note there is a bonus planet that I end up discovering because well it's not really a planet it's one of those uh, little dwarfs they're uh, they're uh, purple and they're very easy to spot so I find one of those as well so we'll uh, 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 you can see a little cluster that's very obvious there clearly a subsystem of this stellar system and as I near it, we find six astronomical objects there. So this turned out to be a fruitful G-type. Uh, that one I didn't hit just yet, but uh, we know that we've got a bunch of moons around this uh, bluer one. So I take care of this first. Note the this is a much better ring structure than we've seen on some of the other planets. I make note of that. This is a lot more Saturn-like in its rings, much more colorful and uh, stratified, if you will. Anyway, this is the other system, the purple, purple planet. And as we near it, we see it has a much plainer ring system there, just sort of a fuzz there. Nothing too distinct. So I'm beginning to appreciate the variations and type of rings that we get around these gas giants. Anyway, on we go. The next star was uh, lone M type. After that was lone F type. And so the next star I'm going to show you on my trip was B30-1, which is an M type with a bunch of stuff around it, mostly asteroids, but three actual planets and one of them with a moon. So I'll send out my basic discovery scanner pulse here. And in total, the number of objects that we have here is 12, but again, mostly asteroids. Ultimately, I explored these that you see here, but I didn't get the final read recorded. 
so I'll just go on. But I did explore those. After that, uh, the destination was an M-type, and then finally our first interim destination. Our first waypoint, if you will, but of course there are a lot of other waypoints in between. Uh, so this is TY-S E3-5. Nothing around it, and as far as planets are concerned nearby. It's a B-type with an F-type companion, so as since it's unexplored, I decide to try and hunt for that F-type at least to, I guess, cover the system. And maybe the F-type has some planets around it. So I head out to that. Very obvious, it's right there on the, on the orbit. And... And we just find the F-type star on its own. No planets around it. But I take care of it. Do some fuel scooping as well. So, on to our next uh, interim destination on our way to Thor's Eye. And that is Smojue XE-R E4-1. And along the way we're also going to hit two other B-types. The coordinate for our next destination is negative 740. 95 and 3630, meaning that we are 3630 light years into the galaxy. So, this is an M type, and I explored one of its planets. This is B33 2, EN P B33 2. And so, it's got one planet that I take care of. There it is. No big problem, it's an ammonia rich gas giant. Next up was D8-14, which was an A-type. Nothing around it though, nothing interesting at all. But, you know, A-types are good. And I might get exploration credit for that. After that was a G-type, C17-6. Unfortunately, no planets around it, much less Earth-like planets around it. Anytime you hit a G-type, you always wonder if there's going to be something like Earth, right? But, no such luck. Seems like the main luck I get are with M-type stars. And here again we have an M-type, and when I send the pulse out, I get a few pings. Two new astronomical objects. And I pick those up. Next up was D8-25, an A-type with nothing again. But I still might get exploration credit for it, so we'll add that into the log. So now we're nearing the destination, and we've got three B-types in a row. So this is E4-12. Uh, this is all XE-R and then E4-something. And unfortunately this B-type was all on its own. No new astronomical objects discovered. And did anybody get to it before me? No. So as long as I get back home with that data, I'll get discovery credit for that. The next system which was much more interesting. It was E4-11. Yeah, another B-type. But this time, when I send out my basic discovery scanner ping, things are a little bit different. Finally, we might have a substantial system here. Well, okay, just one on that, but once I go to the system map, it looks much more interesting. Here we have that one ping you see is that inner planet, but then we've got three of the purple ones, and you know those have moons around them. And then there's this big gap between those and the one on the inside, so we know there's something else in between. I don't know what the logic is for determining whether it shows up on the map even if you can't ping it with a discovery scanner. I suppose it must be because they are large enough to be stars. But anyway, here I've got a conundrum. I've got two possible systems in front of me and I have to decide which one to head to. I go for this one and it's pretty straightforward. Gonna have to hit all of them anyway. So it's got six new astronomical objects. And you can see those right there. Actually, that was the one filling the gap there. There might be another... There is another planet, a number two planet in the system that I haven't hit yet. Nine on this system. Okay, and so this is the sixth planet of the system. You can see it's 
very prominent flat color disc I would say uh, dense but not very varied not entirely interesting except that this planet is clearly on its edge in other words it's got an uh, axial tilt of 180 degrees or so and uh, you'll be able to tell that as we head for the next system which is actually the seventh planet this little blue one here and I overshoot it but I discover six new objects I come around and not too far off. Anyway, uh, this is sort of a more pleasant sort of gas giant here. Possibly close to being a sun. Probably more like a gas giant. Anyway, so the system looks like this at this point. And I'm hanging around the seventh planet. But uh, we ended up having a lot of little moons with no atmospheres. So I don't know if, how much I'm going to get for that. We are going to head back to Kakandi eventually to see what the real value of all these are and whether uh, some of these are more valuable than I think they are but here now you can see the the sixth plant there you can see it's very prominently white because it's on its edge and showing us its ring so you can see the very very thick rings of that purple planet as I head towards yet another target so yeah that was interesting having uh, uh, gas giant that's so obviously tilted by 180 degrees was nice. Okay, so 10 new astronomical objects, and this I believe was the fourth planet. And I say planet, but you can see it has, it's got a star icon, and it's really one of those brown dwarfs. And I do a little bit of a ring skimming here. You can see I come really close to this this guy. Uh, it's a bit dangerous, I think, but uh, well, I had that target in sight, and I just went for it. But well, now that I know I can do it, I'll probably do it a lot more often because it's fun to sort of skim the rings like that. Really, this uh, system E4-11 was full of stuff, and I kept going, and you can see, uh, I think more than thirty different astronomical bodies explored here. Yeah, definitely more more like 40 so yep definitely a good tally on this star which is good because the actual destination for this leg of the journey which was E4-1 ended up being sort of a bust even though it was a B-type it was a B-type with a B-type companion but no astronaut objects around either one so yeah it was like that at least I got to explore them Easy enough to spot the other B-type. And so we get that. But nothing else except for it. So, a bit of a disappointment. Alright, next next uh, interim destination on our way to Thor's Eye was Mojue CL-PE5-6 by way of, again, two other B-type stars. Somehow this seems to be a pattern in my the way I plot for destinations. I always end up plotting... Uh, at the end of each leg I have three B-type stars in a row somehow. Anyway, this is a lone M-type, uh, B41-0. Nothing too interesting about it, and I subsequently pass on seven consecutive M-types in a row. So uh, here we see I'm headed for CL-P E5-8 which is uh, the first of the B-types of the three B-types that I was uh, headed for. Four, three, two, one, one thing that's worth noting is the star field and the blue stars in the background, especially as I switch systems. Uh, you'll want to notice that because that's got to change dramatically as we get closer to three, Thor's eye. Two, one, for now, it's not too striking. Anyway, that B-type was all on its own, nothing interesting. The next one, uh, E5-19, was also uh, a B-type of our planets that I could see anyway with my basic discovery scanner. It did have an A-type companion that I took care of though. But here we see the ping going out this time, nothing. And I check and I find out that it does have that companion, so I, I look around for that unexplored again so again discovery credit for this and I head for a very obvious dot indicating where the A-type would be 
And sure enough, looks a lot like a B-type. It's like right on the border kind of thing. But yeah, nothing else to show for it. No planets or anything. So you see uh, a few more of the blue stars. You can see sort of a cluster there almost. But we'll see a much more obvious cluster as we get closer to Thor's eye. And that's because Thor's eye is almost part of it. It's got a lot of O-type stars right around it. Okay, this is just a G-type on our way to the third interim target. Again, CL-P E5-6. Still in the Smojue sector, but this will be our last destination in the Smojue sector. After that, we head to M21 and then on to NGC 6530. Okay, so this is again a B-type. And this is a B type with a close A type and three purples. And that's what I'll call them. You know, the ones that are sort of planets, sort of stars, brown dwarfs. Uh, I'll call them purples because they're part planet because they're going around the central star. Not really companions because they're not making the star wobble too much. But here they are, the three purples. They're actually going around both stars, I think. Uh, but first I head for the A type companion here. It's pretty close, as you can see. So, no big deal. Unfortunately, nothing except for itself around it. The purple ones will have plenty of stuff around them, you know that, because they always seem to. So, here you can see a little purple speck, and if it's a purple speck, you know it's gotta be in the system. And how many does it have? Five new astronomical objects, so four Four little moons, if you will. A little bit more ring skimming here. Not quite as close as the last one I did, though. It'd sort of be a shame if at this point, with all the discovery I've been doing, that I wasn't able to make it back home, right? Let's not take too many risks. Now, the star cluster that I'm talking about, there you go. Now it's much more prominent, isn't it? You can see all those stars there. They really distract me, and you can see them now behind the B-type. Yep, that's gonna distract me like anything. Anyway, so in this system I discovered what I could and you can see only a few moons around each of those, not quite as prolific as the system we saw before, but the some of them seem to have gas giant companions, that was very interesting. Okay, so on to the next waypoint, next interim destination M21 sector EW-W, E1-21. Along the way we hit this F-type star with, uh, I get seven pings off of it and I have two planets to explore out of those. Uh, the coordinates for the next destination are negative 600, comma 60, comma 3900. So now we're, we're headed to 3900 light years within the galaxy. And so this next one is EM-VD2-18, which is an F-type, and I explored two planets there as well. And it's the star right before our B-type destination on this leg. So actually, this leg was a very short one. But all in all, uh, we have traveled in this episode so far uh, more than 430 light years. Okay, uh, two new astronomical objects as expected. There you see them. I don't bother with its its companion there. I just explore the planets. And then now on to the B-type. Now as we get closer to Thor's eye, it's much more likely that other people have discovered stuff. So, so far on this trip, I've uh, seen no indication of anybody else discovering anything. And so that's very important. But now as I go to system map here, I find out that EW-WE1-21 has in fact been discovered by Ratfish Gimp. And, uh, fortunately though, uh, that particular commander has not bothered with its companion stars, the two Bs and the one F type, so I decide to hunt for those. And in fact, it's not very hard. 
just scanning around you can see there's a dot there I decide to look a little further just in case there are some of the other companions uh, hanging out along that orbit but in fact that is the only prominent dot so I head towards it I'm puzzled right now where the other companions could be but in fact they're all right there in fact uh, all three stars are grouped together there in a quite brilliant array and as we get closer you can see that two B-types and an F-type right next to each other. So that was sort of convenient and I, I guess maybe maybe Ratfish Gimp does uh, I don't know maybe maybe Ratfish Gimp knows that it's not as worthwhile to discover these things as it is planets or maybe rushing towards the black hole something like that I don't know or only handles O-type stars maybe Anyway, so now I set my sights on Thor's eyes, so this is the final leg of the journey. We've hit four interim destinations so far, and now I'm on my way out to Thor's eye. The total distance covered will have been, well, it's almost a thousand light years. So this, this trip is a long one. And here, the first first point along the way, I pass on this one. But the next star, D2-58, is an F-type. And uh, while I ignore its companions, I do explore the two planets directly around it. So we're now in the M21 sector. And we see just two tiny little planets, nothing too remarkable. And in the M21 sector, that cluster of bright blue stars is really, really prominent. Okay, so next up is an F-type with uh, one ping, and I pass on the one ping, I don't bother with that. But uh, what happens after this gets, gets a little bit interesting because the stars after this are not fuel grade. You can see here, uh, Blaith, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, however you pronounce it, you notice the A1-2, that A indicates that it's a brown dwarf type star and we can't fuel around those. See, these are too dim to grab fuel around. And the next one is too dim to grab fuel around too. So as I turn around you can see A3-4 and that too is useless. See, no good for fuel. And my fuel is diminishing, and as I turn to the next star, or if you can look at the bottom left, and that prominent star field there, we see it's another A, so I'm, I'm not good for fuel right now. I need to divert to something that I can fuel up at. Uh, so the next star is an A, the one after that's an A, so no fuel for those two legs, and that's probably too dangerous for me to try to tried to go for so I need to find a way to head for a fueling star and so I go to GW-CD60 that's an A type and I go by way of uh, another brown dwarf but I'll skip showing that so this is the A type that I went to in order to refuel because otherwise I'd probably be in trouble well while we're here is there anything interesting to discover. Well, there's seven new astronomical objects. I go to system map and unfortunately Neochrome has already gotten to him. Uh, not the purple though. I haven't gotten to the purple. So I decided to go ahead and explore the purple. I'm, I'm picking up scraps here. What can I do? But uh, it's easy enough to find the purple and of course one thing we know about the purples is they've got a lot of stuff around them. Again, don't know if the moons are worthwhile or not, but while they're here, I might as well. And as usual, as I'm passing around now, that that's that field of blue stars, that's getting pretty ridic ridiculous at this point. Uh, if you don't think, I mean, it's actually nice to see it from a distance. I imagine uh, getting into the middle of that is not quite as brilliant as seeing it from here. Anyway, on to the next thing, and we hit a bunch of other lackluster stars along our way to Thor's Eye. 
it seems like that huge concentration of O-type stars somehow means that the area around it has just a bunch of crap. So here's a brown dwarf. This is a T Tori star, which unfortunately we also can't fuel at, but uh, at least it looks halfway decent. Also, as we get closer to Thor's eye, people have discovered even the less prominent stars, and so we see here NGC 6530 sector, QI A B1 5, and this is an M type star, a red dwarf. But this close to Thor's eye, that doesn't stop anybody as we check to see if it's been discovered. It has by MacArthur, and MacArthur even handled the planets. Very good. And another M type along our way was BQ W, B2 2. And this, this didn't even have too much around it. As we send our basic discovery scanner ping out, we find. Nada. But even with that, this M type has already been discovered by D Day. Note though, our next destination is Thor's Eye. And we're actually uh, into the area with all the O type stars, so as we head for Thor's Eye, we don't see the huge field, that cluster behind it. Okay, so here we go, Thor's Eye, an O-type star with a black hole. And here it is, brilliant blue. And really the question now is just, who discovered it first? Nothing except for the O-type, at least nearby, no planets to speak of. And the discoverer is... Antikthon. I don't know how to pronounce that properly, but uh, Antikthon got both the the O-type as well as the black hole, but I want to see if I can find the black hole. Now, this is going to be more difficult, and in fact, uh, it turns out, I'll, I'll spoil it for you, it turns out impossible for me at this point, because there's nothing else around. If you remember the previous black hole that I found, I did it by noting the way that the other stars that were sort of uh, circulating around it uh, were positioned. But there's no star orbiting the black hole. The black hole is orbiting the O-type central star. So there's there's no way to scan for it. I mean, I can't look for it. You see, I'm I'm rotating about. That's a seriously blue star. You can see how it's coloring my dashboard there. But um, there's, I'm hoping here as I look out to find some sort of planet that's outside of my basic discovery scanner range and hopefully that planet would give me an indication where the black hole might be or uh, maybe there's some other body luminescent body that will give me some sort of tip now we do have the little wa wandering stars the little dancing stars there you can see but I still don't know how to use those to locate the black hole uh, they seem to be all over the place uh, even if I get further out away from Thor's eye A, the central star, uh, they do their thing. So you can see Thor's eye A's orbit there. That orbit is a wobble in relation to the black hole, which is further out. The black hole is not in the middle, that's for sure. So the black hole is way further out, and it's causing this wobble in the central star. But that doesn't help me much in terms of locating the black hole. Because the black hole could be anywhere in its own orbit, and I don't know the mass of the black hole, how far away it might be in relation to this. If I knew their relative masses, I'd at least know the relative distance, but I wouldn't know where in its orbit it is. So anyway, I uh, still dancing stars there, still trying to hunt somehow, but really it's a fruitless thing as long as I don't have the advanced discovery scanner, which I need to go back for which is why I'm headed back to Kakandi. Oh, there's the star field. So uh, it's actually behind us now in relation to Thor's Eye. We actually went a little bit further in, and so now it's uh, set uh, where we used to be. Anyway, so uh, I am parking it here for this episode, and we have reached Thor's Eye. We, we uh, traveled about a little bit less, uh, let's say 900 light years, 
and it took me in real time four and a half hours on a Saturday, thankfully, obviously, and uh, the next stop will be the Lagoon Nebula, specifically Herschel 36, which is the the central star pair. It's actually a pair of O-type stars in the middle of uh, the Lagoon Nebula. And after I reach the Lagoon Nebula, I will uh, turn back to Kakandi. Before I go to Lagoon Nebula, though, I want to hit at least one neutron star. And there are a bunch of little neutron star systems right around Thor's eye. So I'll head for one of those first. And they're probably all discovered by somebody else, but at least, you know, it'll be interesting to see what a neutron star is like. And then we'll head on to Lagoon Nebula, which is only a short distance away. It's only 270 light years from here or so. So yeah, that's the plan. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments and suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.